to kick off IETV's global world programming with an interview with uh, Charlie, Charlie Clark. And Charlie, uh, where are you from? I'm from the UK. Okay, and where in the UK? Uh, Brighton, in fact, right now. Terrific. And what is your company? Uh, I'm newly independent as an impact measurement and management specialist. Um, previously, I was working with a company based in Brighton called ITAD. Uh, it's a specialist m and &E company um, prioritizing mostly the international development sectors, but increasingly working with private companies, multinationals, and investors. Great. And uh, why, why are you here at SOCAP? Is this your first time at SOCAP? So it's actually my third time, so I'm slightly less overwhelmed now with the size and scale as you were describing. Um, so this, this time around, I'm lucky enough to be speaking on a panel. Um, and the topic is something that is uh, becoming increasingly relevant um, as transparency and accountability becomes more important in this sector. So the topic of the panel is about verification of impact measurement and management. So that's, that's today. Uh, fascinating. So uh, tell me more about that. Uh, you know, as as we, we were talking earlier before the broadcast of the fact that you uh, know and work with Jane Reisman, who has been very involved with Impact Entrepreneur in our webinar series. We've done a couple of uh, webinars now that have impact measurement and management themes. So it's a, uh, a, a staple of our educational programming that we do, something that I'm very passionate about and want to continually kind of update our global network with kind of best practices, latest thinking, and so forth. So tell me a little bit more about the panel today and uh, what you'll be speaking about. Sure, thanks. Um, so the panel, the composition of the panel is fantastic. Um, we have the International Finance Corporation um, Chief um, innovation officer Neil Gregory. Um, we have the Impact Management Project, which is a, a consensus building initiative globally on impact measurement and management, which is an incredibly important initiative that's managed to bring together 2,000 practitioners from investors, from fund managers, and from uh, practitioners such as myself to come together on what impact measurement and management is and, and sh how it should be delivered. Uh, uh, Clara Barbie, who's with IMP, was on one of the uh, webinars that we did with uh, that Jane moderated. And for those of you who are subscribing to IETV, that webinar is uh, available uh, for free viewing on IETV right now. So I just thought I'd input. Um, uh, myself, uh, I'll be speaking to a case study that was delivered um, for a verification exercise of a VC fund, venture capital fund based in the UK. Um, for their impact strategy and their practice measuring impact. Um, and finally, we have Karim Haji, who's on the panel, um, who is uh, the, the convener of the uh, impact um, measurement management course at Said Business School. Um, so the topic is about verification very specifically. So what is the role of a third party working with a fund manager um, to, uh, to validate um, the impact measurement and management strategy and practice? And is this targeted to all types of companies or is it mostly uh, focused on uh, public companies, on early stage uh, impact companies, uh, particularly focused on investors? What? Uh, great question. Um, this particular panel, I think the target is mostly fund managers because the verification exercise would be conducted for them. Um, however, the verification itself would look at their relationships, their partnerships with investees. Um, so yeah, but the fund manager is, I suppose, the key audience. But uh, the panel will, of course, touch on the major uh, issues in impact measurement and management. So anyone is welcome. What are some of the biggest challenges that we have? Well, give me a sense of the trajectory of impact measurement and management, and kind of where it is. Where is it now in that evolution? And what are some of the big challenges that uh, impact measurement management professionals like you are, 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 are struggling with and, you know, the challenges that companies and investors are struggling with? Give us a sense of what some of the macro uh, issues are or, or, or hurdles. Um, I hear very often um, that, uh, number one, people want to focus very much on metrics first and foremost. So. What metrics do I use? In, in some ways, that's the wrong, dare I say it, starting question. 
you might want to think about um, what you want to know in order to invest in and then manage an investment to deliver impact. Um, so it's not just about the co collecting the data, it's what you do with that data. Um, it's how you then change your practice, how you work with investees to help them uh, improve their own practice. And ultimately what the intent is, is to grow that business and align with that, grow the impact that it delivers. So that's one. Um, related to that, I think, is um, the comparability um, of metrics that are out there. So from the investor perspective, they want to know um, where is my money going and, and how do I know that my money is it's being worked uh, by a fund manager in the best way possible. So how do we benchmark those things if uh, there is a, a proliferation of proprietary systems to deliver this? Um, so, so that's another key challenge. Um, but there are initiatives ongoing to deal with these challenges. So the, the Global Impact Investing Network's Iris Plus initiative is, is leaps and bounds taking us forward in the sector. Um, and we talked just now, as you very well know, with Clara and your webinar, the Impact Management Project is a key consensus building forum to bring together everybody to talk about these issues because there's been significant siloing in practice. Um, and bringing in through that forum, uh, practitioners such as, my, as myself and, and many others who have experience measuring impact in international development, for example, which um, there is uh, much more um, accountability expected in that sector because of the sources of, of fin uh, funding, often government funding, who are accountable. To you're, you're talking about now philanthropies and kind of charities, nonprofit organizations, and uh, are you? Well, I suppose then what I was slightly segueing to say is that um, practitioners such as myself who come with a background in donor-funded international development. Um, there is more expectation and requirement to measure impact, whereas in this sector, in Im impact investing, it's a newly developing field. Yeah, it's it's so interesting that that is one of many places where the uh, charitable, philanthropic, nonprofit, uh, NGO, INGO experience over decades in you know providing goods and services, provide providing uh, education, providing uh, whatever that service is, but then measuring it uh, and in a very mission centric and sophisticated way. And how that, all of that body of work and experience is infusing itself and absolutely crucial to this business development and, uh, and impact investing space. Uh, anything more that you'd like to add? Just that there are different lexicons and different cultures that need to come together to make this work in impact investing. Um, so the the charitable sector and the international development sector, um, of course, have so much to bring, but there's a slightly different language that gets spoken in those sectors, both in terms of terminology and vice versa in investment. Um, there are different drivers, there's different incentives, but a very different language and energy. So bringing those two worlds together is a key challenge. And again, the Impact Management Project has done that. But I think continuing to work on that is essential. Um, much like impact investing itself is about partnerships. I think that's a, a key thing. Uh, so let's say I'm a early stage entrepreneur working on my company. And let's say I'm a uh, I, I aspire to be a, a B Corp, really want to build into the DNA of my company from the outset, really uh, authentic impact, impact DNA and anchor it to kind of best practices, which would include kind of impact measurement and management strategies, practices, etc. Now, I'm bootstrapping this company, right? I don't have a lot of bandwidth to develop uh, customize, develop impact measurement management strategies. Uh, certainly, don't have the capacity that an existing corporation would have uh, it, to to do this. How do you, you know, what kind of suggestions do you have as kind of next uh, first steps for for entrepreneurs like that to begin the process of of getting it, building it in early, but doing it in a manageable way? Again, a fantastic question, um, because as you say, early stage businesses don't have the resources all the time to uh, devote to this practice. Um, I suppose it depends on whether, first of all, whether you consider yourself to be a social enterprise, 
to get bogged down in terminology or a socially responsible enterprise. If you're a social enterprise, uh, one would imagine that you have set yourself up to deliver explicitly goods and services or um, operations that benefit a social, a, a certain uh, disadvantaged group. So your um, delivery of those services or goods to that group will be core to your business model, in which case, give yourself a break. What you are, if you are measuring as you, as you most likely are, your delivery to that group, you're already leaps and bounds forward with measuring your impact case. So uh, conceptualize that as your impact case and keep it really simple at the beginning. Um, as you hopefully successfully um, gain investment um, from seed to series AB, as you move through that um, investment uh, journey, consider yourself also moving through an impact journey. So you might uh, become more sophisticated with your capture of impact data um, and your use of that data as you grow. So you should consider the two in parallel and again, give yourself a break, but um, uh, also allow your um, decisions of which investors you work in, can take those very carefully because some investors come with um, some grant funds to support you with uh, developing that practice um, and the networks as well to who can help you with me do the measurement or advise you on the measurement and maybe incubators and accelerators out there they also often come with allied packages of services to help you figure this stuff out okay so now I'm an investor okay and uh, let's say I'm uh, you know we've decided for our fund to focus on sustainable food uh, companies to invest in. My experience in uh, working with and talking with a wide range of impact investing funds across sectors is that there's, you know, that in general, uh, they tend to, there's this wild west show in terms of how they're approaching impact measurement and, you know, the way they measure the companies in their portfolio, the way they communicate impact to their uh, LPs, to the, the you know the broader set of stakeholders to the world, uh, you know that kind of transparency is, is certainly uh, embraced by many people on the investment side in impact investing. But whether they be uh, developing impact strategies that are kind of that they've customized for their sector and for what their aims, or whether they're uh, looking to IMPs work, looking to IRIS Plus, the, the Global Impact Investing Network's system for uh, in, doing impact measurement. Uh, there are lots of different approaches to this. Standardization, some kind of standardization, even across sectors, seems to me to be important here. So you can do different kinds of comparison of funds. Um, where are where are, where are the fund managers in this and what should they be doing if they're not doing it already? So you're absolutely right. There's a, a broad range of practice and proprietary models being used and some aligning themselves with IRIS and the impact management project, which again is a consensus. So there's a huge range and that should be lauded. You know, there's innovation out there um, in the vacuum, if you will, of a standard or a benchmark. Um, however, there is a, a, a big innovation at the moment led by the IFC, um, the International Finance Corporation, um, uh, called the Operating Principles for Impact Management. And there are principles um, which gives a broad framework uh, mapped against the investment cycle, essentially, from um, structuring, so impact strategy, structuring origination, uh, portfolio management and exit, to say what are the key components within those steps in the investment cycle that are essential if you are to ma measure, manage and measure uh, impacts well, adequately. And those principles and the signatories to those is an enormous step forward. Um, and it is our first step towards developing a, a, a standard because the standard sounds simple, but the next step could drop out of that so-called where you have more uh, specificity behind those components that then other fund managers can, can come to the table with. So a wonderful initiative with the IFC. Okay. Now I'm a, uh, I teach business in school, in, 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 to the graduate level of a business school. What 
what, how would you describe to me uh, the kind of education around impact measurement and management that I and my program, my business school should be embracing as the impact really starts coming to the fore in business and in, in, in the teaching of business principles. Um, where, where is impact measurement and management currently in your view, what do you, as far as what you're seeing, where is that in academia? Is it being taught at all? Are there any uh, examples that you can give me of a program that's actually doing it and doing it well? So as you're alluding to, this isn't uh, my specialty so-called, but, but yes, there are examples. Um, so what should they be doing? Well, uh, th there is a long history at Said Business School, for example, at the University of Oxford with the social phone finance program there. And that's really saying, um, how do we build um, a circular economy, a more equitable economy um, by aligning um, social performance and business together um, in rather than outsourcing the guilt, so to speak, um, in the form of CSR. So there's been a long history at the University of Oxford with social finance. More recently, in the last two, three years, they have now established an impact measurement and management uh, professional short course, um, which Karim Haji, who's the moderator of our panel today, is, is leading with um, colleagues at, at um, Side Business School. I know that he's also, Karim, uh, leading a, a, a course in South Africa as well, at the Bertha Institute, I believe. Um, and I'm sure there's uh, work happening in the U.S. I'm just less familiar of it, given my accent. Great, great. Uh, just a few words before um, we sign off. And thank you for your time and, and for the, the real substantive uh, contribution you've made to the conversation. Uh, tell me about your, your business. now. So it's a consulting business, right? Well, uh, I'm newly independent. Um, I am newly back to work, in fact. So I, if I come across a little rusty, thank you for your patience um, because I've just had a baby and I'm now... Congratulations. Thank you very much. So I'm, I'm now launching into a freelance career. Um, so offering my services um, in collaboration with others or independently to design and manage impact measurement and management systems and processes or do verification exercises or advisory. Um, and I will be based out of Geneva. Do you have a website? Oh gosh, no, not yet. Not yet. How can people contact you? Um, I'm on LinkedIn. Um, my name is Charlie, Charlie Clark, C-H-A-R-L-E-Y. Uh, C-L-A-K-E. So there's an E at the end. Great. Charlie, thank you so much. Okay.